Many thanks for staying with us. This is Business Incorporated on Channel's television. I am BC at Dubai. Coming up on the show, Nigeria's headline inflation declines further in January, and Mali is set to complete first sale of Islamic bonds this week. Plus, Kenyan government forecasts a 5.8% expansion in 2018. Well, let's begin today's show with Nigeria's headline inflation data showing a 12th consecutive decline in January 2018 at 15.13% from 15.37% in December. Increases were recorded in all classification of individual consumption by purpose divisions that yields the headline index. Well, data from the National Bureau of Statistics released today shows that the food index fell to 18.92% between January 2017 and January 2018, but increased to 0.87% from 0.58% in December 2017. The increase is attributed to the fuel scarcity in many parts of the country, which has led to a rise in the price of food items. The urban inflation declined to 15.56% on an annual basis from 16.78% in December 2017, while the rural inflation rate also eased to 14.76%. Well, let's hit the markets now, starting from the African continent, where all the markets are looking up at intraday. The Nigerian All Share Index is up 0.36%, while the South African JSC Index is also doing good with a 0.23% increase at intraday. Egypt is up 0.43%, while Nairobi closed positive at uh, plus 0.35% on Tuesday. And then we'll move straight to the Gulf markets, which are mixed at intraday. The Abu Dhabi index is down 0.25%, same with the Dubai index, which is 0.16% lower at lunchtime. Qatar and Saudi indices are up 0.81% and 0.07% each. The European markets are trending higher as investors digest and monitor the release of corporate earnings and economic data. Let's talk to Arich Bath, who's my colleague at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange, for more on the European markets. It's good to see you again, Arich. So we have Credit Suisse and France's Credit Agricole, which are some of the companies reporting earnings today. Can you tell us about these numbers? Yeah, the numbers are uh, very different and the shareholders' uh, reaction is very different as well. Uh, with the Credit Suisse being affected by the tax reform in the United States, like so many other big corporations, which also do business there, and the, uh, the effect, the beneficial effect of write-downs on past losses uh, being reduced by this tax reform, and that's hitting Credit Suisse like it has so many others, and uh, hitting Credit Suisse to the tune of 2.3 billion Swiss francs and that leads to a loss um, and uh, but still uh, Credit Suisse and its operations and its operative um, business is talking of a profit turnaround it expects much better uh, quarters ahead and uh, here the share is going up as a reaction to this news a different picture at uh, Credit Agricole uh, it increased its profits uh, by a third that's an impressive number but the share is going down because uh, France is number two in the banking and the financial services industry is reporting that uh, business with private clients uh, has, bec has become more difficult in the domestic market. Uh, and that's uh, bad news for the shareholders. But on the data front, Eurozone industrial production rises 0.4% in December against 0.2%. And the second reading of the GDP growth rate figures are out today. Can you put these numbers together for us? What factors are driving them? Yeah, I think uh, the, the general um, uh, upswing in the European economy, in the Eurozone economy, one must say, uh, countries like Great Britain not uh, really contributing to that. Uh, they're outside the Eurozone and having trouble. Um, and wh when you t hear analysts talk about the production, the industrial production number, um, putting a lot of the, let's say, a lot of the credit to Germany, which already put out numbers, and those were strong. Uh, German exports are strong, as are imports. Um, but that's a major factor there. And GDP overall in the Eurozone, very strong. And it's interesting here, I just talked of the powerhouse Germany uh, in, in, in terms of its influence on the production figures mm, in, in terms of overall growth in the uh, fourth quarter of 2017. It was Spain uh, that had the largest uh, economic growth figure, 0.7% for the quarter. And uh, this, despite all the turmoil over the political conflict with Catalonia, 
country basically in a political crisis mood. And then Germany and France uh, with 0.6% uh, and lagging clearly behind Italy uh, with only half as much quarterly growth uh, facing a difficult election at the beginning of March. But just before you go, Ari, tell us how anxious are investors in Europe over the U.S. inflation reports, which is expected today, which could soothe or exacerbate fears or faster interest, hike, uh, interest rate hike? That's right. Nobody knows where the number is going to be. It's uh, expected to be at 1.9 percent with core inflation uh, for January in the United States, uh, expected around 1.7 percent. Of course, nobody knows ahead of these numbers whether they actually uh, will meet that. So that's the one uncertainty. And the second uncertainty is, uh, will the market actually breathe a sigh of relief if inflation comes in at these numbers or comes at a lower number? Or will the nervousness continue? And uh, on the other hand, will the markets actually turn south, uh, you know, with a 180 degree turn and uh, tumble again and, and offer a review of, of last week's sell-off if the number comes higher. Um, the nerves are very, very tense and everyone here, I think, is, is hoping for that to come. But it, uh, yeah, it's still uh, just shy of an hour away. Well, many thanks, Orange, for this update and see you again tomorrow. Now, U.S. stock futures pointers will gain at the open, setting the Dow on track for its fourth up day in a row as global equity markets recover from their sell-off earlier this month. Investors are bracing for a reading on inflation that's due before they open. The data has taken on heightened significance as a recent market drop has been blamed in large part on inflation concerns. But looking at the benchmarks now, the Dow Jones Industrial Average Futures rose by 0.46% to 24,740, while the S&P 500 added 0.4% to 2,672.5. The Nasdaq 100 Futures tacked in 0.43% at 6,591.